before, you'll see them again. It's in Dawn's DT. So here we go. Alright, so the segment starts just as we turn left. It's pretty beaut. Everyone knows 5.5k, 5%. If you've been in Adelaide, you've definitely done Norton's. So Jim Ryder's on the left, and there's like two or three other people behind us. He was trying to get this pace to a sub-15, like a 14.50 roughly. Uh, I had no idea what that was, so I was just sat next to him and just tapped it out. A little bit hard at the end, but mainly just quite chill, to be honest. I shouldn't have sat here in retrospect because the camera footage will be rather boring because it literally just looks like I'm going up a climb. Um, so, it, I mean, it wasn't the most exciting of TTs because I think it just wasn't really super hard. Um, it was sort of... Nice, nice to go, like, a decent tempo up here, um, up Norton's, I hadn't really done it before, like, in a decent tempo, like, the whole thing, i have done intervals on it before, but only, like, parts of it or whatever, but yeah, it's quite a nice climb, it's not really very steep, here's probably the steepest part, 6-7%, um, it basically just gets less steep the whole time, um, I mean, I think drafting is quite big, um, so it definitely would be low wattage if I was, um, behind everyone else, but I was like on the side because I wanted to talk, um, get some combo, because it's not every day you get a ride, a ride with Joe and Ryder, so I was like, get some combo with the lad, um, so yeah, it was quite nice, I mean my combo was, I was talking quite, a, well not quite a lot, but like a decent amount here, but as we got up I was like getting a bit more out of breath, I was like, let's just concentrate on the effort a bit more, and see the little shadow, the camera waving, I'm just getting out of the saddle, just having a little chill. It's not, not too hard going up the climb. It's quite nice. Oh, you know, we're going decent pace, like 20 k's an hour and 6%, so, you know, it's all right. And I think, for me, like, on these 5 6% climbs, my power is, is pretty similar to people who are way a little bit more than me. There's not that much dissimilar in terms of the power, maybe, like, 10, 20 watts. just depends. Like, the aero position, I think, is one thing. Um, that I wasn't doing as what well. much during ride was a lot more aero often. Um, he'd be in the drops a lot more um, while I was more on the hoods, and not like in an aero position on the hoods, like sort of fully upright. Which I think like it does definitely make a slight difference. Um, maybe not here as much because it's like twenty k's an hour and you're going relatively fast. But when it, you're not going super super fast, but when you're going like twenty five thirty k's an hour on the climb, so if we're going faster here, then it definitely wouldn't make a difference. And at the end, when it sort of flattens off a bit, gets down to about three or four percent you pick up the speed a bit, and you can definitely feel the error advantage, like, behind, I was sort of doing like 200 watts, 250 watts, and then here, it's, it's average about 300 or so, um, so it's not, it's not crazy wattage, um, but I think, um, as someone else was saying on the Norton's TT, I can't remember who it was, um, when you ride with a group, even if you get dropped, you're just going to go so much faster because you've got dragged up it, and, like, you're going to push harder than you normally do, but also with the draft, it just means that you can, you can go, well you will go a lot faster, um, so you can see on the little shadow my position, my saddle some people say is a bit low, I quite like it like that, I'm um, slightly bent, really relaxed, trying to keep my body as still as possible, um, the weird thing is often I find on this camera angle here, it looks like you're almost going downhill, but you're, you're not, it is definitely uphill, but it just looks, it looks weird on the camera, um, but yeah this is, this is like quite nice part, it's not too stressful. Norton's is just like a really, really chill climb. Um, it's not really very hard at all. Anyone really can get up there um, with a, a bit of fitness. I mean, even if like you're very unfit, I still think you can get up just because it's just not steep at all. So as long as you pace yourself and don't just absolutely blow up, um, I think it'll be fine. Like you might, I guess maybe, yeah, if you were really unfit, you might need to stop or whatever. But I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't get up. Um, if you had like a stop or rest or something, um, for gearing, I mean, like for me, I, on this effort, I don't think I, I mean, I could have probably almost stayed biggering the whole time. Like it was quite fast. So gearing wasn't really an issue at all. If you're going slower, like it can be nice to have easy gears, but normally you're going slow enough so that, um, like if you're going slow enough that you need, um, you needed easier gears and I have like a 36, 28 because my 32 isn't working. Um, so in a 36, 28 at like 200 watts for me, I'm still going like comfortable cadence, like 90, 90 cadence. So if you're going really slow, like maybe 100, 150 watts, like for me, that's not, it's a small enough exertion that my cadence, if it's 80 or 75, it doesn't really matter. But obviously if you're less fit and you might want to slightly use the gears, if you're at a 34, 32, then I think 
you can definitely get up and it'll be fine. So I don't think I think the majority of riders gearing wouldn't be an issue on this climb at all. It's not really something you have to think about. Maybe you might want to think about big ring or not. I think um, for me, I think um, Jiren Ryder and some other people were on compact, so they were basically in the big ring the whole time because obviously um, the gear ratios are slightly smaller. Um, but for me, I was I just decided to chill on the small ring until the very last part because I didn't know if we we're going to sprint or what. I'd say that's yeah. Like on obviously, if you're going full gas, like if we we're doing maybe more like a twelve or thirteen minute TT, then yeah, you probably just could stay big ring. Um, but you can see the heart rate's getting up there about one hundred and ninety. I mean, it's a bit irrelevant what it is, but. Like, I'm de I am working. Like, this is not super easy. Um, I felt really weird, though, like, on this effort. Because normally when you're hurting, like, your lungs, so they sort of hurt, but not this. It, this felt like I almost had, like, a stomach ache or something. It felt really weird. Like, my lungs just felt not very good. I'm not sure if it was the pollen, because my eyes felt a bit bad at the end, um, or what. But it was really weird. I hadn't really felt like that ever. Like, when I'd been doing FTP tests before or whatever, I just hadn't really, hadn't really felt like that. It was really odd. Um, I'm not really sure how to describe it, it was sort of like, it's like, you know when you're doing sort of a VO2 effort, and it sort of feel felt like that, but like a million times worse, I just I don't know, it was really odd, but at the end, I was like, I was like, actually, that's fine, I could have gone for a lot longer, but halfway up, I was like, I might get dropped or something, because I just like, I just felt really, really off, um, I don't know how to describe it, but, yeah, so fortunately I was okay, and this morning I went out on the bike and it was fine, so I think it was just, I don't know what it was. Maybe I was just like, because normally I don't ride at the evening, so maybe I hadn't, I'd eaten too much food, I'd eaten too little food, I don't really know. Um, but then after, actually after Norton's, when I went up to Mount Lofty, it was it was fine, so I think it might have just been like, wasn't wasn't used to the hard efforts, because I've been doing a lot more like sweet spot training and longer endurance rides, so I haven't really done much threshold um, in the last two or three months. I don't think I've done any in the last, since probably like September, when I was doing some hill climb stuff, that was when I was going over threshold, and maybe I did a I did a bit maybe like on some of the chain gangs I've done in uh, Regent's Park, but like not really like a consistent 10, 15 minute effort. Um, so there's a car, so we just decided to go single file. You don't have to, but it's just polite. Um, so you can see Jimmy Ryder, it looks like he's not barely like trying. Um, he's quite relaxed. Good cadence, um, not really like pushing that much. You can see he's in the big ring as well. Um, no bottle cage, which I thought was odd, but, you know, it was, I guess it's a TT, didn't know he was going to turn up, if you want to go full gas, I, got, I left my saddle bag at home, because I was like, probably won't get a puncture, and if I do, I do I've got pumps, so I can sort of just pump up my tyre and just freewheel home, whatever, um, but in the end, it was it was irrelevant, because we were just, just going for a nice chill, not chill, but I like guess just a solid sort of tempo threshold effort, nothing full gas at all, um, so yeah, it's nice, it's really nice in the evening here, actually, because it's, it's not too, too hot, I mean, having said that, it's like 36 now, um, and it's like relatively late in the afternoon, but yesterday was quite nice, maybe like 25, 28 degrees, just very chill, um, no real wind, a bit of wind here or there, but you can see from the trees, I mean, the trees aren't always the best way, the best is a flag or something, but you can see from the trees that the branches are barely moving at all, so it's it a little wind, which is always nice when you're trying to push it a little bit. You can see the power is pretty consistent. Um, I'm surging a bit here or there because I'm. I seem to have lost my ability to cl climb because I've just been doing a lot of flat work recently, which which is sort of good because it showed that my work has come off and I can hit higher numbers on the on the flat than um than on the climb or not necessarily that but more when I tested my FTP that was on a climb and that was when I was climbing well so then obviously on the flat then I did the same power and I built it up but now on the climb when I go back to the climb because my fitness. It's probably a little worse. I wouldn't say I have the same uh, power as I used to um, because I've been doing more endurance stuff. Um, but So it means that it's a little bit harder on the climbs that I'm not as used to it. But, you know, I think in a week or two I'll be, I'll be back back, back on it, back ready to climb it again. Because um, I've done like five, 6,000 metres of climbing so far and it's uh, Friday. So that was uh, this week. So that's, that's a lot more than I've been doing in London because... In London, I mean, it's like it's quite hard to get to the climbs, and even when you get there, often you're doing really high power, fast speed climbs, so it's not really the same. Um, so on this climb, it's actually probably easy because it is a fast climb, but when it gets down to like 15, 14 k's an hour, I find it a lot harder. 
um, than I used to, but you know, it will come back. I'm, I'm confident in that. It's more just like I just need to reduce my power a little bit because my body's working the same intensity um, and then as, as it would be before. Um, sorry, my body's working the same intensity but just producing lower numbers, so I just need to make sure I don't try and push it too hard because then my problems and also or I just won't be able to complete the, um, complete what, the training session. Um, but yeah, going up here just very very nice you can see it's just amazing there's literally just no traffic here it's it's one thing that i really did notice on my first ride and every ride since then you literally go up norton summit um i live like one k away i'm staying one k away from norton summit at the moment and um you go up there and there's literally just no traffic there's i mean there's some there's normally cyclists um i think i've seen cyclists every time saw some world tour guys up there today um but there's just there's just no cars and it's just so nice you don't have to worry about people running you over or whatever you just like there's no traffic there's no like waiting you can just do your interval do whatever you want ride your bike and it's um it's all good which is just such a change from London and such a change from most cities it's just like it seems it seems that Adelaide is very concentrated like everything's so in the middle it's like quite busy but then as soon as you get out into the hills, there's just no one, no one really seems to come, I guess the thing is, there's, there's faster routes, because you go on the freeway or whatever, but you wouldn't go up here necessarily, unless you really live here, um, which is nice, and really, really good for training, because you don't have to worry about anything, you can just go on the hills, so you can see that the speed's picking up a bit here, this is this is where it sort of starts, starts to flatten off a bit, it's down to about 4%, picking up the speeds to 23, 24 k's an hour, which is really like, on the aero draft come, I mean, people say it's aero is more important when you're going over about 10 miles an hour, some people say like 25 k's an hour, but I think in that range, it's it's important, definitely, um, I think, but obviously, when you sort of get over 20 k's an hour, I think it really does become a lot more apparent, the draft, um, and then obviously over 35, 40, 50 k's an hour, you really do feel it massively, um, I think the percentage changes quite a lot, from about 15, like 15, 16 k's an hour, you can definitely feel, feel a little bit of draft, but not really, but when it moves up to 25 k's an hour, it's like, it's quite obvious, um, and it, it also just depends, obviously, if you have a headwind or a tailwind, if you have a headwind, then there's, the draft's going to be stronger than if you have a tailwind, um, because the resultant of the wind is more, uh, against you, well, sorry, the resultant of the wind is more, uh, in favour of you when you're doing a headwind, because obviously, the person's put, drafting more more energy. Uh, sorry, I'm just explaining that really bad. But anyway, when it's a headwind, it's basically just a lot easier to draft off. Um, but yeah, so you can see, I'm I'm starting to suffer a little bit. You can see, like, I'm not. And Julian Murray's not half wheeling me, but he's he's. It's more like instead of him half wheeling me, I'm like doing the opposite of half wheeling, where I'm sort of like slowing down a little bit. But he's trying to pace someone, so I was like, all right, I'll stay. But I feel like. Sometimes when you get into this situation, you're like, I can either, I could probably attack now, but like, I can't really seem to sustain it. I don't know, there's something about, I find it quite hard to just sustain the same power for a very long time. I, I prefer doing something like spikes or whatever. Um, but then I decided, right, it's time for me to pop a draft. So you'll see, the power hasn't decreased yet, but you'll see when it flattens off. Um, so it's still 5%. Um, but when it gets down, it actually has, it already has, um, actually I think the person who De Harley was trying to pace uh, was getting dropped a little bit, so he put the power down um, a little bit, which was nice, and gave a bit of relaxing, but you can see now the power's down to like 2.30 or whatever, and looking around, and this is coming to the end, I didn't know if I wanted to attack or not, I thought it might be a bit rude, plus it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be a uh, rest day today, but anyway, it was good training nonetheless didn't really affect my intervals this mu that much today, so I think it was fine, um, and it's also just nice meeting meeting some other people to ride with, um, and seeing what the TT is all about, obviously it, it could have been a faster TT, but it was quite nice just chilling up the climb, so you can see here it's really like 2%, this is that coming to the end, and this is when like, if you're going full gas, you'd be going 30, 35, 40 k's an hour or something, um, just because there's a slight tailwind on this part, well, there were, or at least there was yesterday, but it's more the it's more the fact the gradient's sort of gone down, um, and here you can see I'm doing like 150 watts, like, it's it's just really easy, and that sort of slightly ramps up again, just before the line, um, and there's always this thing about the line, the line's basically just like where the wooden hut is on the left, um, 
but I wasn't really chasing a, a big time. I think I'm like 500 out of 11,000, so it's, it's not bad, but I, I definitely want to sort of get top 100 or something, which which I can probably do if I um, if I focus on it and go out with a good group. That's the thing on this climb. It's not an individual effort. Like, yeah, if you're a pro rider, you could probably get like top... Well, if you're a pro rider, you could probably do very... We'll get a top 10 on your own, but if you're a weekend warrior like me, getting getting into the top 100 would be quite hard um, without a good draft mainly because everyone else is drafting um so there you go you can see on the left that we finished everyone's chilling out seeing how it all went seeing what the time was um and then we're going to continue on so cheers for watching and i'll see you in the next vid